This is section 4.4, real zeros of polynomials. We restate the factor theorem which we had in another section. A polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k equals zero. Remember we had that remainder theorem that said f of k would give you the remainder. And if the remainder is zero, it means that thing went in there evenly and it was a factor. So this factor theorem should somewhat make sense to you. Let's look at these concepts next. Um, my screen's messing up. Okay, let's look at this one. All right, it talks about x-intercepts, zeros, and factors. All right, the x-intercepts here are at negative one and three. Those are also called the zeros or the solutions to this equation. f of negative one, the y value zero, f of three, the y value zero. Anytime you have x-intercepts, the y value will be zero. The factors are written as x plus one and x minus three. Same concept is shown here without any numbers. You've got some function f of x, this is an x-intercept k, f of k is equal to zero, and because k is a zero or a solution, x minus k is a factor. All right, multiplicity. The x-intercept corresponds to the zero, negative two. And right here, we see that that didn't go through the x-axis. It touched it and went back up. It has a multiplicity of two. And you can see x plus two squared. That's a multiplicity of two. Over here, there's two x-intercepts, negative one and two. At two, we have a multiplicity of one. At negative one, we have a multiplicity of three. And again, we look at complete factored form. If the zeros are C1, C2, C3, then the complete factored form is X minus C1 X times X minus C2 times X minus C3. No commas in between. Parentheses mean multiply. So if we had to do this question, write the complete factored form if given the leading coefficient is 13 and the zeros are negative one and two. Given this, the factors are x minus a negative one and x minus two. So when you write that, you'll have x plus one times x minus two and 13 goes in the front. All right, one last concept. Let's pull this from what we've been seeing. Over here, this zero of negative three has a multiplicity of three. Goes through the x-axis, multiplicity. This zero of three has a multiplicity of two. All right, it's odd here. It crosses the x-axis. It's even here, it touched and went on. This zero of negative five has an odd multiplicity of one. This one has an odd multiplicity of three. So to make some conclusions, if the even multiplicity the graph does not cross the x-axis. Odd multiplicity, the graph crosses the x-axis. The higher the multiplicity, the more the graph levels off near the zero. All right, knowing that, let's go look at some problems and see if we can do these. All right, consider the graph and associate it with appropriate function. Choose the correct function. All right, so we need to look and see where our x-intercepts are. So we've got x equals one, x equals negative one. So our factors are x minus one and x plus one. Now, on this one, on the negative one, what do we know? It went through, so that's gonna be an odd, it's gonna be an odd number here. We don't know what, we're not looking at that answers yet. And on this one, this x plus one, um, sorry, did those backwards. 
this is the one that will have the odd. Because it went through. This one will be even. Because it just touches. So, x minus 1, it needs to be even. And this one needs to be odd. So, it can't be this guy because x minus 1 is not even. So, that can't be right. x minus 1 is not even here. This one should work. Let's make sure it does. x minus 1 has an even number and x plus 1 has an odd number. So that would work. Number 2, we're asked to find the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, the multiplicity, and sketch a graph. So let's write this a little bit bigger. 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 1 squared. All right. So what are the x-intercepts? Negative 3 and negative 1. All right, find the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, remember that we would need to let x equal 0. And so if we do that, we have 3 times 0 plus 3 times 0 plus 1 squared. So 3 times 3 times 1, which would equal 9. So our y-intercept is 9. Here's our x-intercept. Here's our y-intercept. The multiplicity of the leftmost 0. The leftmost 0. So that would be negative 3. What would the multiplicity be? 1. And of the rightmost 0, it would be 2. Okay. And then sketch a graph. So we're looking for intercepts of negative 3, negative 1. So looks like that has that part. That one does too, and that one doesn't. So we can mark out this one and this one. But both of these have the negative 3 and the negative 1. What else do we know? That the negative 1, it should not be touching. I mean, it should just go here. And this one should go through. So we've got that. What else do we know? Let's remember this on when we're trying to figure out that last part because those, both of those graphs look similar. Um, do we have an odd degree or an even degree? We have an even, I mean an odd degree because we had x times x squared. So we're going to have an x cubed thing. So we have an odd degree and the number in front, the coefficient was a 3, so that's greater than 0. So we should go down on the left and up on the right. So let's go back to our set here. Down on the left, up on the right. This one's doing the opposite, so here we go. All right, so those are things. Now you could literally just put this in the calculator and look at it, and you would be able to tell between these two also very quickly. All right, let's look at number three. I think we're doing the same things, so let's look at this. The x-intercepts are positive three, negative three, and a positive one. The y-intercept, we're going to let x be zero. So we have zero minus three squared times zero plus three times zero minus one. So that gives us nine times 3 times negative 1, which is negative 27. So our y-intercept is that. Those are our x-intercepts. Let's talk about the multiplicity. So 0, 3 has a multiplicity of 2. Negative 3 has a multiplicity of 1. And 1 has a multiplicity of 1. And then if you check with what do we have, we have um, 
you look for your x-intercepts of positive 3, negative 3, and negative 1. I mean, of positive 1. So we got positive 1, we got positive 3, we got negative 3. I'm just seeing that. And we have a y-intercept of negative 27. Those are the scale on that is pretty big. Um, so that looks like that could be right. And we have x squared times x. So we have an even degree and that number and it's positive in front, so it should go up on the both sides. So this makes sense that it would be this one. Again, you could just put it in the graph. Make sure that you put the windows, if you're trying to match, make your windows match as well. All right, number four, solve this symbolically, graphically, numerically. All right, so we're going to take this and set this equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to say x to the fourth minus 256 equals zero. That is the difference of two squares. That gives us x squared minus 16 times x squared plus 16 equals 0. Again, this is the difference of two squares. So we have x minus 4 times x plus 4 times x squared plus 16. That doesn't factor anymore at all. That's going to give you some um, imaginary solutions. So we have x equals 4 and x equals negative 4. So those are our solutions symbolically. Choose the right graph of this. All right. So this is a fourth degree, and it is positive x fourth. So it's not going to be upside down. It's going to be this one, but you could try again. Be sure that you match your windows with a y max of 512 and then negative 512, and you should see that. Number uh, part C says use the table feature in putting that in the calculator. So let's look at that. Let's put x to the fourth minus 256, and we We'll just hit graph because we don't need to see the picture too much. Let's go to our table. And probably need to change that. Um, I want to start my table at 0. Actually, I'm going to start my table at negative and my increments should be 1 and then let's second all right there's my table and so we are looking for where do I have a y value of 0 if I'm trying to solve this with the table at negative 4 and then if I keep coming down I have another y0 at 4, which makes sense. Our solutions were 4 and negative 4, and when we looked at the table, we got the same thing. All right, number 5. Let's solve this one. 2x cubed minus 8x equals 0. Can we take something out? We can. We could take a 2 and an x. We take 2x out of this, we get x squared. 2x out of that, we have minus 4 equals 0. This is the difference of two squares. So we have x minus four, 2, sorry, and x plus 2, and then we have a factor of 2x. So this solution for this little one is x equals 0, x equals 2, x equals negative 2. 
and those would be the solution set that would go here, 0, 2, negative 2. All right. Number 6, we are solving this one as well. To solve it, we need everything on the left. We need to combine these x squared terms. We need it to equal 0. So x to the fourth minus x squared minus 13x squared minus 32 equals 0. So x squared minus 14x squared minus 32 equals 0. And then we're going to try to factor that. That would either be 4 and 8, 16 and 2. Yep, that's going to work. So x minus 16 and x plus 2 equals 0. So I'm sorry, I wrote that wrong. As I looked at it, I noticed that this is, goodness gracious, that is x to the 4. So this is x squared minus 16 and x squared plus 2 equals 0. This becomes x minus 4 and x plus 4. And then we still have the x squared plus 2, which is going to give us some imaginary um, solutions as well. All right, so we have x equals 4, x equals negative 4. So up in our box, you just put a 4 and a negative 4. All right. All right, let's look at number seven. A bird population can be modeled by f of x equals, and then we have an equation. And they tell us that x equals one corresponds to June 1st. x equals two corresponds to June 2nd, and so on. So x equals 15 would be June 15th. What happens if we get to June 30th? That'd be x equals 30. And then we run out of June days, so at x equals 31, we would be into July. So that's worthwhile to remember. All right, it says find the days, so find the x values when the f, the graph, estimates that there were 3,000 birds. So this is a calculator question. So you're going to go to your calculator and you're going to put this equation in y1, this equation in y2. It's going to be a really crazy window, so if you get one with similar numbers, um, maybe our window will help you in getting that fixed. All right, so I've put some calculator screens up here for you. And here is the window that I found to give me the best picture. Uh, X min of negative 50, X max of 50, a Y min of negative 500, and a y max of 5,500. Now we didn't necessarily have to have it that that big, but I wanted us to see the graph really well. So here's the blue in this calculator um, emulator. The blue is y1, and y2 is the horizontal line here. So as you can see, it hits it here, here, and here. Three different places. So when you put it in, you get your your first graph, your y1, you get your horizontal line. Use second calc 5 for intersect and find this point, then repeat it and do this point and this point. Well, you see you have x equals 1, x equals 18, and x equals 40. So this one corresponds to June 1st, this one to June 18th, and again, we're past x equals 30. We're 10 days past that, so this would be July 10th. And I've written that on your lecture notes. Past x equals 30, the month becomes July. When it's 40, it represents July 10th. So in our answer, we would have A, and that equals 3,000 on June 1st and June 18th. So that goes in that box. And then July 10th would be in that box. So I think that will get you uh, through that one.